How's it going guys, Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So as you may have seen from my Bat Steve vs Super Steve animation, I had a couple of interesting effects in there and one that you guys have asked me about or a couple of people have asked me about some time ago and then recently as well is how do you make a cape? So the first thing we want to do is bring in our Steve character so we can have something to put a cape on and there he is, there's Steve and he looks pretty plain not a lot going on here and we want to give him a cape so there are numerous ways to do this and I decided to try out an idea I had and this is the one that I used in the animation because I wanted it to look very cape like uh, I've seen some people they have rigs where it's got like multiple parts and you can bend it and animate it to will and whatnot but I wanted something that would require the least amount of work possible and give the best most cape like effect and if you see my blood tutorial, then you know I like to use certain blocks to help make shortcuts. And that's what we're going to do here. So what I'm going to do is spawn in. Can you guess what kind of block I'm going to use? Can you guess what it is I'm looking for here? Maybe it's the water block. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to create this block. And I don't know if there's any uh, reason to use a different iteration. If you're not sure what I mean by that, you can adjust the data here and it'll make... A shorter block and whatnot. I think we're going to try just scaling it for now. I don't really remember what method I use for the animation, but this is what we're going to go with. So what I'm going to do first is parent the water to our human. We're going to parent it to his body. And as you can see here, upper half is already ticked. That's what we want. So we're just going to leave that as is. And we're going to take this and we're going to scale it, or I mean rotate it, negative 90. So there we go, and uh, this is looking pretty terrible, pretty silly. And I'm just going to go ahead and try to line it up with his back. I think that's going to be about negative two. We may adjust that at some point, but that's what we're going to do for now. So as you can see, it's looking pretty awful, and uh, we need to scale it. So what I'm going to do is scale it. Let's see, we do need to bring it up on the Y. Now again, if you watch my tutorials, then you may recall that my X and Y are opposite of how Minimator comes by default. So whatever one of these scales it the way you need it to, then use that one. I'm going to refer to X and Y the way they pertain to me and how I'm using Minimator. Uh, just, you know, do whatever, do whatever would work for you respectively to these two coordinates. I'm going to make that 1.5 for now, but I think we're going to want to bring that down. Uh, before we go doing too much though, let's go ahead and change the rotation point, the custom rotation point of our uh, thing here. Again, it's gonna be Y for me. So actually, let's go ahead and get rid of that scaling just for a second here. Let's go ahead and make this, I think it's gonna be 16 since blocks are 16 by 16 pixels. And there we go. So this way, when I go ahead and bring it up here, we can line it up. And I think that's uh, pretty much where we want it. Let's try about six. It really depends on how you wanna line it up, but that's gonna bring it up to exactly the uh, flush line of the top of the shoulders in the back there. And uh, now we can really scale this uh, more effectively because it's gonna scale from that rotation point. And I'm just gonna bring it down. What do you guys think? Maybe 1.25, nah, how about 1.3, five, something like that. It's a little bit long, but we'll go with it. All right, let's go ahead and save our progress. And there we go. So now we would need to make it thinner. So let's go ahead and adjust the Z. Once again, that may be Y for you. And it really depends on, you know, what kind of thickness you want. It looks like 0 0.05 could be a, a pretty decent thickness there. Maybe a little bit less. Let's try maybe four. I'll leave it thicker for this just for the hell of it. You guys can make it whatever you want. And uh, yeah, that doesn't look the best just yet and uh maybe we'll have to do some adjustments but we're gonna go with this for now so uh now we have this and uh it's not looking too good we also need to scale it on the z maybe around there 0.65 seems all right to me once again that is completely up to you what you make it and we need to start making this thing look a little better. So first of all, let's go ahead and change the color. All right, sorry about that, guys. I got a little tripped up there. I had to go look at my project folder for the Bat Steve versus Super Steve to remember what I had done exactly to make this cape. It's been a while since I did it. So basically, you just want to change the texture. I have a, a custom texture that I made, um, but it doesn't really work. Something about the way the water is done that the uh, custom texture I made doesn't work. So it just makes it like a red thing. So uh, if you watch my other tutorials, then you should be well aware of how to create a texture. Uh, so all you would do is just take a 16 by 16 image, 
and just paint it red. Just use paint.net or GIMP or whatever photo editor you like to use and just make a small little texture image. You can take one from Minecraft and then just paint over it and make it red and then go into your library and uh, change the texture of the water block to that red texture and it'll do this. Unfortunately, you can't just up the mix percent like I wanted to do initially uh, because the water still shows, like the water texture. Maybe you want that, maybe you don't, but I want it to be plain red, so that's what I did. So basically, uh, this is what you get then. Once you change the texture, you get this nice, basic, you know, red look and it looks pretty good. Uh, but another thing that we can do, now this is what makes it a little bit tricky uh, because this really affects, um, no, we don't want that. Uh, it affects kind of the whole animation. Uh, but if you use it, uh, you know, cleverly, then you can get the effects you want. This is what I did with, uh, Bat Steve versus Super Steve. And, uh, basically what you can do is up the wind speed or the size. And as you can see here, we're getting this uh, look of the, uh, the dang old thing moving in and out. And I can up the speed and then you get this nice look here. So, you know, obviously the speed is gonna adjust the speed and the strength is going to adjust how much it moves, like just how crazy it is. I can bring it way up and you get this nice kind of flowy look here to the cape and uh, you don't have to do anything. There's no animating or anything. It kind of just does it itself. And uh, just for the sake of it, uh, I'll show you guys an example here. Let's say you wanted Steve to, to run suddenly. So let's just make a keyframe here and we'll take a keyframe here. And we're not gonna make him actually move, but we'll just have him go into this. So you see how, you know, he starts to run, right? So what we can do is animate this a bit just to add a little extra flair. So what I'm gonna do here is right about there as he starts to run. How about we'll come right around here and we'll have this kind of come up a bit and stuff. We may actually bring it down, you know, kind of finagle it a little bit so it looks a little more interesting. And we'll give this a transition. So let's just say we'll go down here and give it an ease in transition. It's probably going to be a pretty subtle, but uh, that's what we'll try to do. Yeah, that doesn't look the best. But anyway, you can imagine if he's running and uh, the cape kind of flows. That's too slow. Anyway, you would obviously want this to look better, but you can do some animation with the rotation and whatnot to get it to, to look the way you want to. You can see there that does not look the best, but it gives it the illusion that there's like air catching it and, and it's starting to flow as he begins to run. And uh, now... Furthermore to what I said, we may want to adjust how much the wind is impacting the cape as we animate. So like for now, you know, it's kind of doing this and that's that's good and all. Maybe we want it to be kind of subtle. The wind's kind of just blowing it a little bit. But then when he starts to run, we want it to get more aggressive. So what I'm going to do is go up here. I'm going to go to modify background settings during animation. I'm going to create that timeline. And if you've seen some of my other tutorials, like my five tips for my animator tutorial, you may be familiar with this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is change the speed and strength of the wind at this point in time. So there's a couple of glitches with this, but uh, we'll go ahead and try it and uh, see what effect we get. We're gonna turn up the speed to 100% and the strength to 100%. So then we get a little bit more goodness there. So what you get is this effect. Like it's hard to see, but you know, it's a little bit more movement so you may notice here that it's really freaking out like it's doing all this stuff and that's because the wind speed is going up and the shrink is going up over time and my animator kind of has trouble with that linear movement of the speeds it's, it's kind of like forcing things to speed up almost like a time lapse so what i usually do when i'm editing uh the wind strength and speed in an animation is i'll make these transitions instant so that way it'll go from one to the other without the uh, the craziness in between. So as you can see there, that looks a little bit smoother and whatnot. Uh, unfortunately, that's the case. You know, I wish it didn't do that, but 
you know, with some clever camera work and whatnot, you can kind of get around that and it'll be a okay. This is exactly what I did when I did the uh, Bat Steve versus Super Steve animation. So that's what you get. That's how you can make a basic cape. This is a really easy way to get a cool looking cape effect. Unfortunately, you know, I wish you could get this more easily with a more flexible material. But uh, this is just the first way that I tried. And uh, I just really like the effect. I don't really know if you guys will like this or find it that helpful or useful. But uh, I really prefer this over some of the rigid rigs that I've seen. And uh, I thought it was kind of worth the finagling in order to get this cool effect of it like flailing in the wind or whatever so one last tip as we uh, touched on in the beginning guys i just used the regular water block but you can adjust this data setting and if you bring it up to maybe about five it brings in a water block that's a little bit more uh narrow than the one that we used and when you scale this one you may actually kind of retain some more of that movement effect that might actually work better so it really depends on you know how you want it to look and what you want to get out of your animation. If you want a more subtle look, then you would go with the way I did it. If you want a more uh, noticeable look, then you can adjust that data setting. As soon as you bring it in, uh, you go to the data here and you can adjust the water. And I think about five might be where you want it, maybe six or seven. Uh, it's really up to you how, let's go ahead and get rid of this extra one that I brought in. See how this one it kind of goes through itself. That actually may be a desirable effect. I'm not really sure. I haven't really played with it that much. But you can see there, it actually kind of goes through and, and it's not just a, a one-sided motion. So yeah, play around with that and you can get all sorts of cool effects and whatnot. One thing of note before we go though, uh, one thing I did try is to make it more animatable. You might think, well, I'll just use multiple water blocks and put them together and then I can bend them and stuff. The only problem is if you notice the way these are moving here, uh, when you have two separate water blocks, I don't think these are in synchronization. So you would have your cape kind of move like with splits in it. It's not gonna be like one solid movement with two blocks on top of each other, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, just to give you an example here, let's just go ahead and parent one water block to the other. So if I do this, and I bring this up, like I wanna make a jointed cape. Well, then you can see there that the, the movements, they don't uh, match up. So if you wanted to make it with a joint like that so that you could make it bend, I don't have the, the stuff set up for this, but anyway, the point remains, if, uh, if you did that, then it's not gonna look right, unfortunately. That's just something to keep in mind. I generally would recommend just sticking with one water block. And again, you may wanna use the like number five to six or seven data setting in order to make something with a little bit more flow. It depends on how subtle you want the effect to be. But yeah, that's how you can do it. It's basically just a water block with a custom red texture applied and stuff. So I hope this was helpful, guys. I hope uh, you learned something. I hope you guys get some use out of this. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to become a citizen today. Share it with your friends and your family and your pets. And I will see you in the next video.